Hey guys, it's James with Cowboy Cricket Farms here. Uh, so, part two of how to for cricket farming. Um, I'm in the same shirt as yesterday, so you. But whatever. Honestly, it you know we get all sweaty and dirty here all the time, anyways. If you're just in the farm all day, I don't see how it makes a difference. But for all of you slightly more civilized folks than myself. Um, Maybe you want to start cricket farming. Now, hopefully you caught part one of the series, which had to do all with uh, basically what supplies you'll need to start a really basic cricket farm or a little cricket bin, uh, whether it's for yourself or for a lizard or tarantula or whatever it is. Um, however, most of what we're going to be talking about uh, in this series all has to do specifically with food crickets. Um, also, trying sideways camera mode, so hopefully it's a little bit wider and better looking, I guess. I don't know. Uh, moving on. Okay, so we have our bin and our egg cartons. So, the egg cartons basically are here for surface area. Cricket's like a lot of surface area. Um, based on past research, as far as what we've seen, uh, you're looking at about two square centimeters per cricket. Uh, is kind of your ideal amount. Uh, too much space and they don't seem to perform as well, though they do mature a bit quicker. Uh, too little space and they will cannibalize, so they'll actually eat each other. Um, giving them the right amount of space, putting the right amount of individuals in the bin is very important. Uh, it just gives you a better start to everything. Um, and we've had to do a lot of this by trial and error and really trying to figure out what works best. And this is what we found for as far as our Type A bin, uh, this is the setup. So, you take your egg cartons. Now, as I'm sure you know, there's an area where generally you'd have your eggs sit in, and then there's the area that would go on top. Now, the reason why this is important to note is you want it to flop. This gives them more ability to climb different surfaces, uh, it kind of opens up the area a little bit. In this size bin, we end up putting four of these pairs across. You want to remove these. Keep them though, they're very useful. Uh, you'll end up with probably more than you know what to do with, and at some point you'll just have to get rid of them, but uh, for the most part, just keep those, especially when you're just starting at four. So, four of the pairs, a total of eight egg cartons, and that goes across. Now we started, with this area originally being open and a little trough of food and the sponge would sit in there. But what we found is that we can provide more surface area and put everything on top. The crickets actually tend to do a lot better. So for this empty front portion, we're going to get another five egg cartons. So we'll have two and a half pairs. Okay, and then those will just go in opposite. Okay, so they're going to thwart shift, they're going side to side versus front and back. Once we have this, we are ready for our feed and sponge. So for the feed, uh, generally what we do is we have another more flexible lid just to get into here, but really it's whatever setup you determine. Um, we also have smaller ones that we pour out of. Now, you don't need to worry too much about the quantity. Just go with, you know, more is better, basically. It all depends on how often you're going to check on them. Uh, we check on our crickets every three days, unless we have reason to check on them more often. And so I make sure to give them ample food. Uh, the worst that happens is three days later, you come back and they still have food. Next is the sponge, and I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. Okay, so we have our pop-up sponges here made from natural vegetable cellulose. And here we have our sponge tray with some water. Now, this is even more dramatic when you put it in like a full bucket or something, but this is what they start at. And this is what happens to them. You'll see them soak up all of that water. And we'll definitely have to end up adding more.
Okay, now, at this point, we have freestanding water, right? We don't want that. Sponge has excess, so I'm just going to pour that out, come back, and if we have just a little bit of moisture on the sides, that's fine, but we don't want too much, okay? So a little, just a little light squeeze here gets out the excess. So now that you have your sponge on there as well, we can set that in right next to the feet. Um, even the pin heads are large enough to jump over these little lips. However, it's oftentimes a good idea just to try to get the lip of the plastic kind of near the edge of one of these egg cartons. This makes it easier for them to climb over. But these have enough grip on them and they're low enough they can usually jump in or at least climb in. Uh, remember, especially for the pin heads, you don't want any freestanding water. Not only does it create more bacteria, more importantly, they're going to drown in very quickly. Um, the pin heads can get stuck in a single drop of water. You get 20 or 30 of them in a single drop. Uh, but even the adults, when you have enough crickets in a small enough area, they can kind of crowd and drown in as little as an eighth of an inch of water. So the sponges are really, really important. It's the most low-tech, easiest setup that we can find. And um, while there are a few better ways on a large industrial scale to do this, this is what we recommend if you just have a few things. So what you'll see here is that uh, there's an area for the frass to fall through as the crickets jump about. Uh, now, they're gonna kick some of this food down and you'll see with the breeding trays, they kick some of the dirt around as well. There are ways to solve that, but generally it's not a big issue, especially the food. Um, if the food mix in with the frass a little bit, they'll just eat it and, and you'll be fine. Uh, the worst that happens is you get a little bit of the feed in your frass and it's really not gonna hurt any plants. So that's that. So next is we're gonna put in some crickets. Uh, but before we put in any crickets, I think it's gonna be important that we go through the whole life cycle um, and you understand what the different crickets are so that as we, as I take you through this little portion of uh, putting the pinheads in and then how to care for them and then how to harvest, you already understand the different age groups. So uh, this is episode two or part two of how to farm crickets with James Rowland at Cowboy Cricket Farms. Uh, please tune in next time for part three which will be the different types of crickets and their life cycle. So, until next time, stay chirping, my friends. Dang it, I forgot again. Please like and subscribe, little bell thingy at the bottom there. Yes, please tell all your friends, share on Facebook, share on YouTube, like us on Facebook, at Cowboy Crickets, Instagram, Twitter, all those super duper things. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.